Sup everyone, we're back with more Great Ace Attorney. Let's kick it off by talking to Gina. Gina? 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 Who knows? The gentleman's accusation. What do you got for us, girl? Miss Lestrade, is what the gentleman is saying... What do you think? It's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swear on me life, I ain't ever... I ain't ever laid eyes on that dandy before. Let's... Let's hear it now, you little ragamuffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now. No, I swear it. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago I was walking along the street minding my own business. When this little gutterling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Oh yes, as you can see I am a man of impeccable style. Yeah, sure. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these back slum scoundrels. Just look at my fancy pose, aren't I just... impeccable? Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Uh. Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Hold on, why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy cove, and you think I'm the dodgy one. I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence of stowing something, eh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have an evidence, naturally. You what? Uh, before we get to the evidence, let's speak to this dude. Let's see if he what he has to say. Picture postcard gentleman. Excuse me, but who are you? One would expect the inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, sorry, yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. What? Who is this Jojo-ass motherfucker? Its inhabitants live on some fiery brown-colored soup dressed up with exotic spices. You might be thinking of somewhere else. And what was that theatrical ge gesticulation? Exactly. Who is this dude and why is he doing Jojo poses? I feel like this dude would get along well with Sholmes with the poses he is doing. Perhaps. Anyways, if you are gen gentlemen, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Rienosuke Naruhoto. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Susato Mikotoba. I am Mr. Naruhoto's assistant. I see. You gonna say your name? My name is Benedict. Yes. Egert Benedict. Egert. That is a unique name. Enchante. He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but that name is Ayashi. Suspicious. Sus. Now, to the matter at hand. What the f- <laughs> My overcoat. Return it to me. To someone with the style to carry it off. I don't think that, that overcoat suits you, man. It kind of clashes with your whole white ensemble. White and brown? I think that's not usually something you see someone wear. I don't know. It doesn't seem your style. Ugh. Every move he makes, every breath he takes, I can't stand watching him. Well, we figured out this dude's name. What's his portrait look like? Bop, bop, bop. 
Papa Windebank. His first name is Papa. Eggert Benedict. And ah uh, yes, and it, he has an and he has question marks in his name. Hmm. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. A young English gentleman with an aloof and high-handed manner. He appeared at Windebank's pawnbroker, accusing Gina of stealing his re re redemption ticket. The proprietor of a pawnbroker on Baker Street that is regularly t regularly patronized by Mr. Sholmes. He has a very great sense of responsibility to his clients. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's speak to Gina again. Now that we know that dude's name. Evidence that the article Miss Lestrade had redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman. Of course! We know we need only consult consult Mr. Winderbank's ledger to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yes, brilliant. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh, I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. A great many of them prefer to maintain their anonymi- their anonymity. Anonymity. Yes, I see. But then how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Didn't they mention, like, a redemption ticket? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir. Might I trouble you for the washword associated with the article in question? Of course, it's... Professor. Yes, that is right. And all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article. Without doubt. A watchword? Interesting. Watchwords. So, about these watchwords, Mr. Wonderbank. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. Sholmes. This man. I never get tired of him. That wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sholmes now, was it? This idiot is always just peering at random stuff, or on a wall, on a desk, peering into a, a frickin' what, whatever that thing's called, I forget. Great detectives have no dark secrets, none at all! Yeah, sure. No dark secrets. Not, not in the slightest. I mean, you can't really have dark secrets if you forget everything that you've ever witnessed, basically. As, like, Sholmes does. Anytime he finishes a, a freaking investigation or whatever, he just forgets all about it. Yes, well, anyway, that's why I always ask for a watchword. Well, a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to unlock a vault. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course, when I give the storage ticket to the customer. Oh, then I give it. I mean, sorry. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article. That is right, sir. Yes. Just as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I have supplied you with the information you require already. But for the avoidance of doubt, the article in question is an overcoat, deposited two months ago on 15th of February. With the watchword of Professor. All perfectly correct information, sir. I mean, couldn't he have just, like, I don't know. Uh, actually, maybe the watch. Never mind, he would. I don't know how he know the watchword. I was saying for the date and whatnot, couldn't he just look at the ledger, but... But... But ow! Really, this is beyond a joke now. There is no further room for doubt. Uh. Well, you tried, Gina. Huh. Is 
So, let there be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Eggert Benedict, sir. With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. You know, I did say that the color is clash, but considering how much of it covers him, it doesn't look as bad as I thought. It still kind of clashes, but it's... eh. It's not terrible. Tch, this is why I hate grown-ups. Just because I'm a dove, everyone thinks it makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, Broker. But of course, sir, uh, here is the disc for you. Just this one. Pardon, sir? I was expecting another. Oh, uh, that is, I deposited another. Another disc? Oh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that when the... The what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. So, Gutterling, you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, eh? I don't know nothing about it. I don't know nothing about it. Sorry. Very well. Pose. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc is mine. Oh sh what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Oh my yes, there's blood on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man must have scratched his finger on them. I found it first, all right. I mean, it belonged to me, to me old man. So you're not having it. Or you, you take it. Me? If I ain't on to it, they'll have, it, they'll have it off me again. So you keep hold of it. It's a straight eye. Why is this just so important to her? Oh, okay. Ah yes, entered into the court record because we're totally dealing with the case right now. A metal disc used to play music in a mechanic, mechanical music box. The piece of music, which remains unidentified, is stored on the disc by means of small protrusions. No mention of the blood on it, but it's there. You there, in the black livery. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't! He's lying! Grown-ups are all liars! Uh... Does Ryanosuke not count as a grown-up? How old is he, actually? I forget. Oh, great, we can't look at our own age. Well, Sasato is 16. Uh, I think we're older than her, though. Uh, what do I do now? How am I gonna resolve this? Sholmes? Oh my god, we're, we have to talk to Sholmes, I bet, don't we? Look at Mr. Winterbank watching dil diligently over his shop. There's still so many things I'm curious about. But somehow, I really don't feel like this is the right time to be browsing. Calming this fraught situation must be our first priority. I'm fairly certain that we can find just the great thing we need among the articles here in the shop. Uh, yeah, no. Mr. Winnebank is clearly at a loss here. I have to do something about this before he reaches for that revolver as his. Yeah, last thing we need to do is for him to, is for him to start playing mass destruction. Look at those piercing eyes. He's clearly in no mood to talk. We have to do something quickly before this mysterious gentleman leaves to fetch the police or something. Wow, Mr. Strait is really looking daggers at that mysterious gentleman. We need to do something to calm things down before she loses control and attacks him again. Gee, I wonder what we do. I've got it. We run. Actually, just leave. <laughs> Bruh. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's just go to Sholm's house. No, uh, no, this is no, this is clearly the right thing for us to do right now. Okay. Uh, back at home. 
where there's nothing wrong whatsoever. All right, let's get to work on some paperwork, Susato. Okay, but Susato, what about this? So about this. Wait, I must have more time to examine it thoroughly. Really, there's no need. If it's not relevant in a moment, blah, 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 blah. Ah, uh, such a chill day. Let's go pawn off this disc. Let's see if we can get any cash from it. Oh, shit, I forgot about this. Uh, well, crap. Uh, Mr. Winterbank, can you take this off me? We just left and... Uh, never mind. Guess that ain't gonna work. Uh, hey, Sholmes, what are you doing here? Uh, Mr. Sholmes? What are you examining with such keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. Oh my god, is that what he's holding in his left hand? That's a pretty... That's a pretty neat pose. So. You found me at last, Mr. Norihiro. Sorry? After that young pickpocket sent me on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. Coolly ostracized as the rest of you partook in the jovial atmosphere of fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So, feigning mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in this desolate place. Whilst, as you surely observed, gnawing on the only friends I have left, the 7% percent, percent solution of caramel. Pray, do you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Mr. Narahodo? But how could you? I was so lonely. So desperately lonely. Then why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? Things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Yes, I overheard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. You really were sad, weren't you? I mean, I was... I was thinking of how I wanted to die this morning, so yes. I would... I think some of the sadness is still left in my body. Poor Mr. Sholmes. I feel simply awful for you. I don't. It would seem... that my inferences... It, my inferences are correct. Oh! Surely you're not about to tell us... That you solved the entire case once again. Oh god, are we doing one of those? We're not doing another deduction, are we? Already? We just started off. My dear madam, sometimes I wonder. Where were my genius for deduction to be co com committitized? How much could I pawn it for? It seems Mr. Sholmes has had another of his flashes of inspiration. But who knows if it will help to resolve the situation between Mrs. Street and the mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? Eh, we'll leave it. I don't know. Mr. Sholmes started on one of his wild rambling deductions now. We just fan the flames of this argument. I think it'd be sensible to try something else. Mr. Narahoto, what are you saying? The great detective has made one of his great deductions. He's sure to cut straight to the <laughs> straight to the heart of the matter. Yo, the only thing he's cutting straight to the heart of is straight- is straight to the daggers. He's gonna cut right towards those daggers in the eyes and just... It get in between the sparks between those two. And then they're all just gonna direct their gaze at him and just be like... Get out of the way, detective, before I shank you. That's what I'm worried about. We don't need any more cuts around here. Dear me, you seem decidedly agitated. Clearly, I shall have to take the reins. Yes, please do, Mr. Sholmes. Wow. Freedom of choice is a myth. Looks like we're gonna hear this deduction whether I like it or not. Well, Miss Lestrade, it would appear you find yourself at something of a predicament. <laughs> what the blue blazes have you been, eh? Well, you kind of tuned me to buzz off. Padun. When a lady's in trouble, a true gent's supposed to be there to help. Straight away, not an hour later. 
Sorry, I just always freaking lose it when he does that falling down animation. I was not expecting it that time. <laughs> oh, I love Shalom so much. Harsh. Unto Pertella you. Mr. Mr. Eggert Benedict. You have in my eyes a veritable. A veritably encyclopedic array of curiosities about your person. Nevertheless, there are two immovable, immovable conclusions I have drawn. I beg your pardon. The first is this. The true reason for your visit to the pawnbrokery today is something you have not yet revealed. Ooh. And the second is this. A considerable crime is in contemplation, one you will orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Well, Mr. Benedict, what say you to my deductions? How? Oh. He's turned as white as a hard-boiled egg. You know, it's real funny how they compare this dude to an egg. If I was going to compare anyone to an egg, it would probably be Mr. McGill did, but he's dead. I mean, he certainly got turned into some- into like a fried egg, that's for sure. I'm mostly just calling him an egg because it was the shape of like Humpty Dumpty or something. Rather than his coloring. It would seem that once again Mr. Michol Mr. Mr. McSholmes has made a- has a flawless McDuction. Mc- McDeduction. Just who do you think you are, sir? Ah yes, as I hoped. That is precisely the pain expression I was looking for. <laughs> uh, so, shall we begin? The time has come for yet another Sherlock Holmes. Logic and reasoning spectacular. Let's start the show. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. Topic 1. Mystery Man's Aim. First of all, we must ask ourselves on what business you visited to this pawnbroker today. You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. But that is most certainly a lie, Uso de Aru. The real truth is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. Yes. What brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff recruitment flyer. Uh... One sec. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. I wouldn't be surprised if we just, if what what the answer is is that there's something on the other side of the paper. The piece of paper in your hand is a stuff wanted advertisement from this very shop. Yet even the most unobs unobservant would soon realize that a man of your appearance has no need of such employ. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. He just yeeted that paper away. The cane which you unwittingly clutch to your person exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. I cannot speak words today. What utter rot. I've, I've had this cane for years. The contradiction of which I speak of is the missing f ferrule. The end of any walking cane would be terminated with a metal ferrule to protect the wooden tip. And yet, detailed ana analysis shows the wooden tip of the stick is to be utterly bare. It's not too often that we see him with the goggles on. Therefore, there is only one conclusion. The rod that you hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane, is in fact no cane at all. What is that, like a sword or something? What just- what was that? You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I will I. And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate 
facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle which you in it evidently would like to conceal is the key to understanding this riddle you see. From the moment I saw it, my suspicions were aroused. Once walking cane demands such a stout handle, mused I. But of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. And while I mused, I also find this whole thing quite amusing. For that rod... ...is a spade. Is the broken handle of a shovel. Actually, it's called a spade. Are you insane? And now, having determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear, your true motive for coming here. Was to take employment as establishment in order to excavate the ground beneath the premises. What a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. Ah, uh, yes. To tunnel underneath the pawnbrokery. What, what would be underneath the pawnbrokery, Sholmes? Enlighten us. Great crime. The crime of digging. Listen, Benedict just wanted to become Shovel Knight, okay? He has the top hat because he's actually Mr. Hat. And then he decided he wanted to be he wanted to be like Shovel Knight and he wanted to pogo and all that stuff. He wanted to be cool and he wanted to have a real great chip tune soundtrack, all right? Leave the man be. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For me, was to expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the plan. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, intend to excavate the ground beneath the spawn broker with a broken shovel. What on earth do you propose I could expect to find there? Pose. Some long forgotten treasure, I suppose. Say for such a fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this, and covertly dig beneath its floor. The answer is revealed by the council note notice on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. This letter gives notice of public right works to be carried out in the local area. You know, is it really safe to just have the revolver sitting on the countertop? Couldn't someone just grab it before the, the shop owner can? Yeah, whatever. It's a game. And according to the enclosed plan of the upcoming su sewerage works... Beneath this shop runs a sewer that adj adjoins another. One that runs under the bank of the opposite side of the road. This madness has entered the sewers now, has it? Do I look like one that would get his white suit dirty with... with human fecal matter? By excavating the ground beneath our feet, you would gain access to the waterway. It flows in very close proximity to the great vault of the financial institution opposite. What are you? In summary, sir. You devise a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery by dint of the underground tunnels. M master plan! Damn, did you see that freaking spin he did? That was, that was some high class stuff there. Even when he's getting styled on, he is he himself is stylish. Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme.
with what plunder the thief hoped to make off from make off from the underground vaults of the bank. Are you quite serious? Having consulted with Scotland Yard some days ago, I happen to know the answer. But naturally the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know. A postcard of the Great Exhibition. I'm afraid you've quite lost me. Currently in the final stages of preparation, the Great Exhibition will soon be underway. And the government has provided extra funds to complete its centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. This is the second deduction you have mentioned the Crystal Tower in Sholmes. Funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank, on the other side of the road. Pardon? Yes, the considerable crime you've been contemplating. It's the theft of that which sits in the vault of the bank. The special reserve funds for the Great Exhibition. Of course, that is top secret police information. So keep it under your hat, please. <laughs> this has been Herlock Shows. Signing off. Arrivederci. This dude is just like, what the hell did I just witness? Um... Mr. Shoves! Well, Mr. Naruhoto. An impressively upbeat deduction for a detective racked with loneliness, would you not agree? Was it true what you said about the bank over the road and that it ha and what it has in its vault? Indeed. The few know of its existence. It is one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. Okay, then how do you know about it, lone detective? I know- I- I'm on to your game, sir. You're the true mastermind. You're planning to destroy the Crystal Tower. Not villain Borshevik. Grigson told me, in the strictest confidence. But you just announce it to everyone here. Rather loudly, in fact. Ah. Every time he goes, ah. And if it's such a big secret, how would Mr. Benedict have come to find out about it? There can be what's one explanation for that. Clearly it is because the man is a criminal. What if he didn't know anything about the money in the vault? If he is a criminal, as he said, then buying a brand new shovel is sure to be the first thing he does now that you've revealed the secret. Ooh. Or if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Windebank will. He already has plenty of shovels here, after all. Oh my life, I assure you I'm not so unscrupulous. Hmm. Well, hopefully this has taught you a valuable lesson. Sensitive information must be handled with the utmost of care. Unlike me, I am not careful in the slightest. I am a dumb bitch, quite frankly. Excuse me for ha for the rude language, but it is the truth. One can never be sure that someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. And once the word is out, it's out. Perhaps I'll think twice before confiding in you next time, Mr. Sholmes. Have you ever confided in him in the first place? An excellent idea, Mr. Naruhoto. An excellent idea. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Well then, Mr. Naruhoto, you know what to do, I'm sure. Yes, let's listen to that great deduction again, and see if we can massage it into shape. Alright. Everywhere then, let us start once more, from the beginning. Time for Herlock Sholmes' wacky ass shit spectacular. We off that goop, Mr. Narihoto. Alright, 
love, but I'm time to zoom through all of this dialogue right here. I do 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 Hello, staff recruitment. I don't need what I don't know why they have staff recruitment. He already has a staff in his hand. Haha! <laughs> I know it's a cane, but whatever, it's close enough. So by Mr. Sholm's reasoning. Mr. Benedict came here in order to, to apply for a job so we could dig down through the floor. Yes, in an attempt to tunnel into the sewers to gain access to the money in the vaults of the bank across the road. But he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? Not with that attitude, he won't. No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is where? What did bring Mona... Mr... Mona... 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 Mona Lisa. He's trying to steal the Mona Lisa. Oh wait, we're not in... Fr we're not in France. We're not at the Louvre. Or whatever. That is, isn't the Louvre where that's held? I think it is. Anyways. <laughs> his hat. Shoot, no, it's not his hat. Oh, big shocker, I was right. I called it, I told you it was on, the, I told y'all it was on the back of his hat. Kane. I actually can present it. Let's go with the hat. That silk top hat is whiter than white. Only an English gentleman could hope to carry off something so bright. Nice rhyming. What are you, Gruntilda? But it looks so inc incongruous with a black overcoat, don't you think? I need to look up what that word means. Sorry, I always like to learn new words. You know. Learning new words is a, is a key to uh, having a good vocabulary and being a better wordsmith. But yes, I, w I must say, it is indeed not in harmony with the black overcoat. Perhaps it's the latest for London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork, of course. How about it, Mr. Narhodo? I think you look very fetching in a white top hat. Well, you know, I think it might look rather incong incongruous with my black university uniform, so... You never know. Is it un incongruous with the statement? Yes, it is. Well, then... You can't judge a book by its cover, as they say. Someone who appears wealthy may well be poor. Being such a man, you're desperate for money. When you realized you had no real need for your hat. You brought it here today, with the intention of pawning it for as much as the broker would give you. Why are you being such an utter fool every time? Like, this isn't that hard, all you have to do is flip over the paper, why is it so difficult for you? I still don't quite understand why this gentleman came to Mr. Windebanks today. He might look like he might look like a smartly dressed man about the town. Perhaps he's destitute, really. I really think that's the only explanation. We must stop thinking along those lines, Mr. Narhoto. Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, in that case, perhaps there's something in this pawn shop that the man was looking for. Let's look closely and see if there's anything about this person that gives us a clue. Shit, I didn't mean to- uh, I did autoplay. No! And it's on auto mode, too. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay. Let's go with a cane. That's a proper English gentleman's cane, isn't it? Look at the beautifully polished brass on the handle. Oh, right. Yes, but Mr. Sholmes is right. It's not the sort of handle you usually see on a cane. Perhaps it's the latest London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork. You said the same thing. Perhaps you could, uh, adopt a cane, Mr. Narahoto. It might rather suit you. I have a feeling it might argue with a sword around my waist. Listen, you can dual wield a frickin' sword and a cane. Have the sword on your left, and have the frickin'... Have the sword on your left or whatever, and then have the cane on your right. You know, that'd be pretty cool, have someone dual-wielding a katana and a freaking cane. That'd be... That's a that's an original idea, probably. But anyways, let's present it, shall we? Even though I'm gonna take more damage, but who? what do I care? This game's easy. Because I'm godlike. You can't judge a book by its cover of the play. You can't judge a book by its cover of the play. You can't judge a book by its cover of the play. Is that literally the same thing? 
day. Oh my god, it was literally the exact same. I am so done. I lost two health for the exact same joke. Then again, I... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me pause the game. Okay, thank you. I just want to save. Ah. <sighs> It is hard being having to do comedy gold sometimes. It certainly is a flyer from Mr. Windebank shop. Let's see. Windebanks wants you points at the screen. Pawnbroker's assistant required. It's an eye catching advertisement, that's for sure. You know, if I knew editing, I'd do like I do like an image of if I knew any editing besides adding text to the, my videos, if I had any actual good editing software, I would do like something of like a finger pointed at the screen when I said that line. Just like, Windowbanks wants you, and it's just like a finger pointing directly at the viewer. I've seen the same flyer up here inside the shop, I think. Perhaps Mr. Windowbank is always in need of more staff. So Mr. Benedict came here to apply for a job. He looks a bit too wealthy to need a job. That's just too hard to believe. Yeah, I know, right? He seems well off enough. Uh, you know what? Jesus! Fine, we'll do it though. Screw it. Give me the funnies. Clearly you are a man of elegance and style. But elegance and style come at a price. So no matter how much money you have, you always need more. And that is why you came here today. To apply for a job to supplement your income. Are you quite concentrating? You have identified the exactly what I did originally. Yeah, but I mean, it, come on, the flyer looks cool. How can I not present it? Huh? You ever think of that, Mr. Sholmes? Okay, let me reload. <laughs> Sorry. Scribbled writing. Oh! Look at all the scribbled notes on the back of the flyer here. I don't believe it. What is it? Listen to what it says. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5 foot 2. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue satchel, ragged. It's a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness! There's even a sketch of her, hat and all. Although if we showed it to her, she'd fire that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. I'd love to see that. Oh man, imagine if he did one of his JoJo poses to dodge the smoke grenade. And look, the details of the shop have been written down here too. Windebakes Pawn Brokery, Baker Street. Redemption deadline, 15th of April. Which is today's date. Why would Mr. Benedict have all that information scrawled in the back of that piece of paper? Oh. So what you're telling me is I need to reload to see the inferior version. The game thinks it can trick me out of getting all the unique dialogue. Pshaw. Present that un that unexamined writing. Those notes were scrawled by somebody famous, and as such are worth a considerable sum of money. The fact that you handle the paper on which they are written with gloves only proves my theory. So you came here today with the attention of pawning it for as much as a broker would give you. I'm sorry, that was a pretty unique piece of dialogue, but also half of it was the same as the previous ones. Yeah, I know, but hey, every little piece counts. Uh, let's try examining it again, see if we get anything new. Suspicious writing on the back of a suspicious flyer in the hands of a suspicious gentleman. I didn't think there was anything suspicious about the flyer, Mr. Norhoto. But yes, Mrs. Strait's name and height and a description of the clothes she's wearing? Not to mention the sketch of her likeness, which I'm fairly sure she wouldn't take lightly. Listen. The person that drew her is a, is just starting off as an artist. Give them time. Just follow them on Twitter, like all their posts, give them all the support they need, okay? Eventually they'll make another one of you that looks way better. And you'll be like, man, they have they grow up so fast. They're such a better artist than they used to be. Anyways. We can't let this go, can we? It's far too suspicious. 
All right, let's present it then. Info about Miss Lestrade. Yes, what brought you to the shop in the first place is the info about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch on the rev reverse of the flyer attained to the pickpocket, Miss Lestrade, and to Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery here. I'd like to think that any time Sholmes goes on, any time Sholmes gets, like, he does his deductions, and then he goes, he goes like, sometimes my genius, it's almost frightening. And then he gets corrected, and it's like the equivalent of that dude who, who gets a log through the back of his freaking car. I think it was like Top Gear or something, I don't know. Oh! You originally told us that you had merely given chase after Mrs. Strade stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here today. By which I mean. Here to win the bank's prawn brokery, and today, the redemption deadline of that overcoat. So, you waited outside for the young girl matching the description you have written down to arrive. Hoof. And you have gone to some to some lengths to hide the reason for your pursuit of Mr. Strade. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. The cane which you unwittingly clutch to your person exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. Blah 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 Um, what's a for rule? I don't know, I I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, Rinosuke. I might be butchering your pronunciation. It's the metal cap commonly found on the end of a cane, Mr. Narhodo. Oh, so you mean like a metal version of what they have on the end of like Q sticks for uh for billiards? Like, I forget what they're made of, but you, like, use chalk or something? I don't know. Ah, the bit that makes a nice clacking sound on the pavement. Yes, exactly, and Mr. Sholmes is right. It appears to be missing on this cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. The gentleman certainly did recoil, and Mr. Sholmes identified the cane as suspicious. In other words... There's some secret about the cane that Mr. Benedict would rather n we not know. Ah, damn it! I thought we'd get one more line. Ah, crap. Well then. Initial in? Oh, the initials. It says, what is that? A G. Oh, it seems. We definitely don't have much to examine here. Damn it, I was about to end the episode, and eh? whatever. We can do one more funny joke. The end of this cane is undone. There would. This is where the shovel blade would have been attached. Hmm. Couldn't it just be that the tip fell off? I'm sorry, Mr. Narahodo, but that wasn't the correct answer. Alright. Let's get her done. Bye-bye, health. I will miss thee. I believe we've been looking at this entirely the wrong way around. It's not the ferrule that is missing on this cane, it's the handle. And it's the end you're holding now that actually has the unusually shaped ferrule. Your idiocy dumbfounds me, good sir. What do we got? Let's finish this off. I don't know, I just can't picture it. I mean, a respectable gentleman strolling the streets of London with a shovel in his hand. I'm sure it's just that the cane is broken and the ferrule is lost somehow. Well, there is one thing of which can be certain in all this. After all, we saw it with our own eyes. At the mention of his cane, Mr. Benedict visibly recoiled. That's very true. So there's definitely something about this cane that's not right. Uh, I'm just going to save in case it does the same thing as before. 
what is not right? We will find out next time on Great Ace Eternity. Adios, ciao, and bye-bye. Signing off until next time. Ja, mata ne.